Okay, here we have a, uh, an Asus, what is this? This is an X751L uh, laptop, 17-inch screen, quite a nice one. Um, pretty nice unit altogether. Um, and it has uh, a problem with its hard drive, so I'm going to swap it out. I could put an SSD in. Uh, I'm not going to in this case, but I could. Um, so, uh, if I had to change the battery, uh, this would be also how we would do it, or if I had any other problem inside, like dust on the CPU I needed to clean. So, let's get to it. So, first thing we're going to do is use a uh, slotted, slotted geez, sorry, a um, Phillips screwdriver and um, pull these screws out. So, I'm going to advance through this so you don't have to sit here and watch me pull out nine or ten screws. Uh, just a note, whenever I take screws out, I always lay them out in the order in which I uh, pulled them out so that I can put them back in in the same order. And I say that because sometimes they're not the same size, so I strongly recommend you do the same thing. Just lay them out on the table in the same order in which you pull them out, and then you'll know which one goes back in which hole. So, again, I'm going to skip through this so that you don't just watch me disconnect all of these screws. Okay, so uh, we have all of the screws out. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten screws. And as I mentioned, some of them are different sizes. So the ones at the front are these small guys, and the ones uh, around the rest of it are larger ones. So, again, a good idea to keep them um, in the same order in which you pull them out. Now, uh, often the manufacturers put screws underneath these rubber connectors, uh, these rubber uh, stoppers as well. You just peel them back. Uh, I don't think that that's what they've done here because uh, the screws are close enough to it that it seems unlikely, but it is possible. Uh, sometimes you'll also see them underneath the um, stickers here, and that's because it's a way for the manufacturer to tell if you've opened it up. Another thing to, to do is often you have to uh, put a pin in here and pull the DVD out. I don't think we have to do that here, but I'm going to find out. If we do, um, well, let's find out. We'll go, go about it. So, what we want to do is grab the edge, probably not the edge with all, probably not the edge with all of these uh, connectors on it. Uh, go to a smoother edge. Probably this edge is best. And uh, what we want to do is pry it out. So you can use a credit card. You can use uh, well, there's a number of different things you can use. But something small uh, and flexible is usually best. In my case, I'm going to use something not flexible, which is this little. Um, uh, you know, one metal tool, I guess. And I'm just going to try to get my, get it under, get this to separate. There we go. You can hear it separating a bit. There we go. Yeah, using something metal is not a good idea, but it just, it's a starter for me. And I'm just going to use my fingers to pry it apart. There we go. There we go. Go all the way around here. All right. And okay, what's going to happen at the back here? Hmm, interesting. It's not quite what I expected. This isn't the usual circumstance. Usually the cover just pops off and the board uh, stays, uh, the board stays with the uh, keyboard and the monitor. But as you can see here, that's not the case. Looks like a lot of the boards coming with it. Looks like the Looks like this design is a two-piece design, which I've not seen in recent years, although it did used to be popular a long time ago. So let's see what we can do to keep prying this out without breaking anything. Okay, so looking at the back here, and the DVD definitely uh, goes with the bottom, which is nice, but I'm a bit surprised I can't seem to get around this. So I'm going to grab card. I'm going to grab a card and I'm going to try to slide it around. That's the normal way to do it. Uh, way I have, by the way, I have the proper tools to do this stuff, but uh, often enough people don't when they're doing this at home, so I'm trying to do it without it to show you how it's done. Uh, there we go. Yep. Yeah. So just use a, an old credit card or some card you don't care about to keep working around the edges. There we go. So that's up a little bit now. And along the back here, I can see that there's, it's almost certainly the battery in there, but I don't see anything in there for me to take out. Again, there could be screws in here, and that is a concern. So, I'm just going to slide that credit card around, and boom, 
Now that is separated all the way around except here. So I am concerned that underneath this rubber is a screw. I'm going to, although that's where the battery is probably, so it's very unlikely. But I'm just looking to pull it up and see if there's anything under there just to confirm before I start really wrestling this thing. So let's pull this up and just make sure. No, there's no screw under there, so I can just put that back down. Okay, so now I'm just gonna start pulling it off. Starting to get forceful. There we go, got it. So I really had to muscle that thing in, and now it's coming out quite nicely. So, what I have to be concerned with, because they've done a split design, which I've not seen in recent years, as I said, is uh, what you've got to be concerned with is that uh, you break a ribbon or something. So let's carefully pull this off. Oh! Well, that's different. So what we've been doing, instead of taking the bottom off, we've been taking the top off. That I've not seen before. That's pretty cool. Okay. Well, that explains a lot. So muscling from the bottom might not be the best way to go. Probably best to go from the top. So, well, live and learn. Okay, so now I want to change the hard drive, which is right here. Uh, while I'm at it, I'll probably blow out that fan. That's the CPU fan. That's your DVD. Um, yeah, not much else here for you to see. Uh, that's the uh, disk drive. And uh, battery is back there, so if you have to get the battery out, uh, easy enough to do. I'm sure there's just probably a couple of screws. Yeah, you just pop this out. The battery will pop right out. The uh, connector for the battery is right there. So you can pull the uh, battery out and replace it with one on the one you can buy off eBay if you need to. And um, yeah, that's, I guess, about it. I don't see, even see where the RAM is. The RAM must be underneath, it's probably underneath here. Let's take a little look. Let's see what's underneath here. Or did they solder the RAM right on the board? No kidding. It looks like they soldered the RAM right on the board. Okay. So if I had to guess, I'd say those are RAM chips. So I'm going to put this back down exactly where it was. There we go. And uh, let's get this hard drive out. So the hard drive is pretty easy. I'm sure, yeah, same as always. And again, I'm gonna keep the screws in the order in which I pulled them out, so I can easily put them back to get back in. And there we go. Pull my screwdriver apart. You, by the way, you don't have to, for this device, you do not have to have uh, jewelry tools. You can use just a standard, um, uh, Robert, uh, sorry, Phillips head screwdriver. Okay, so this little note slide out. Yes, it does. So slide it that way, then lift it up, and bedingo, it's there. Now I'm going to take the screws out of the side. And these are always the same, but on principle, I will lay them out again, just the way I got them. If you drop one or lose it, don't you don't have to worry about it. These are really not necessary in today's world. Uh, especially if you're putting the solid state disc in. Um, don't get me wrong, you don't want to lose them. I'm just saying if you if you lose one, don't panic. It doesn't have, it has nothing to do with the electronics. It has everything to do with stopping the disc from moving around, which uh, is a much bigger deal with spinning discs. Yeah, there we go, so that's that one out. And I'm going to put this one in. My little Toshiba. And I'm just gonna put it in the same. Okay, so let's put this back in. So drop it in the slot. There it is, and then push it back that way so it meets up. There we go. And then put these uh, screws back in in the same order in which they came out. Oddly, this has three 
uh, screws and four placements for screws. So again, I'm just going to put what the factory did. Yeah, so what's really odd in this is that it doesn't look like you can upgrade the memory. It doesn't look like this particular machine has any slots. Now, I could be wrong. Maybe it's underneath there, but I don't see them. So, um, but you can easily change the hard drive, as you can see here. And you can blow out the fan, and you can change the battery or the DVD if you so want it. Okay, let's pop that back on now. Um, uh, I always do things in the reverse order when I'm putting things back together. So the last thing I pulled off is the back. So that's the first thing I'm going to snap in. There we go. Let's snap it all back. It's powered up. I don't want it to power up. So I'm just going to, there we go, press the power button to it. Good sign it powered up. There we go. There we go. Flip it over here. Give it a nice squeeze all the way around. Make sure that the... It's all clipped in. You can hear it going there. There it is. And then let's start screwing this thing down. So, the screw came from the corner. Again, I'm going to advance this so you don't have to watch it and get bored. Okay, so I see here that this hasn't squeezed down properly. Oh, there we go. There we go. So, you don't want to screw it down if it's not clipped in properly. You'll be fighting it and you will lose. So, yeah, I can see now that that fit, that fit and finish is quite nice. There we go. So let's keep putting these screws back. Okay, so that all feels good. Let's just take a look and make sure the fit and finish all the way around is good, that there's no tolerances that are out of whack. Nope, that all looks fine to me. And power, power it up. And we should be on our way. So we've replaced the, uh, what is this, Samsung 54 spin, 5400 spin disc with a lovely uh, Toshiba that runs radically faster. And um, that's it. If uh, I wanted to image this at this point, I would take a uh, USB stick and I would use, uh, go to a Windows 10 computer and I would create, I would download and then use the Windows 10 creation, media creation tool to uh, uh, take that uh, USB stick and put the most current version of Windows on it. And then I would plug it into here, have the machine boot off of it, and bedingo, this machine would be booting up Windows 10. All right, that's it. If you have any questions, please get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca. Thank you. Bye-bye.